Okay, everybody. So pretty soon we'll be doing calculus in our class, but um, the best place to start before we do that is to talk about a few things from algebra um, that you need to have a really firm grasp of in order to do calculus. Okay, so I have my first lesson titled Selected Algebra Topics for Calculus, and I'm going to run through um, all the aspects of that in four videos, and this is going to be the first one. Okay, so first thing, um, piecewise functions. Okay, we've got to know what that is. And rather than give you some kind of definition or something like that, I'll just give you an example. Okay, so this is a piecewise function. That's what they look like right here. Uh, you know, f of x is function notation. We put the braces right here, and then notice there are two formulas. And then there's ifs. And then there's these conditions, okay? And you just take this literally. I mean, it, it's like it's saying y is x plus 5 if you put in an x bigger than 1. Those are instructions. And it says y is x plus 1 if you put in an x that's less than 1. Okay? So if you need to do calculations, you just follow the instructions. Okay? So, uh, to give you some concrete examples, look at this. Like, say you had to evaluate f of 4. What's that mean? It means let x be 4 and tell me what y is. All right? So, if I'm going to let x be 4, which one of these conditions um, does 4 fall under? Is 4 bigger than 1 or less than 1, right? You take, you take this literally just as it is, okay? Um, well, okay, 4 is bigger than 1, right? So we, we use this formula to calculate f of 4. That's why it says 4 plus 5, and that's how I got 9. And then what if you're going to do f of negative 3? Well, okay, so negative 3, which one of these conditions does it fall under? Okay, is negative 3 bigger than 1 or is negative 3 less than 1? Well, negative 3 is less than 1. That's why I use x plus 1 right here to calculate f of negative 3. Okay, so I get negative 2. Yeah, so when x is negative 3, it turns out y is negative 2, all according to the instructions and the formulas given. Okay, one last one. Um, what's f of 1? Okay, so what's f of 1 asking us? Well, same thing as these. I mean, this one says, what's y when x is 4? What's y when x is negative 3? Okay, so this one, same idea. What's y when x is 1? Well, notice that, you know, I, I did say, I made a big deal. I said, follow these instructions just as they are. So I have instructions for what to do if x is more than 1. And I have instructions for what to do if x is less than 1. But 1 doesn't fall under either condition. The instructions don't apply to it. So we'd have to say that uh, f of 1 is undefined according to the strict definition and instructions for this function. Okay? Uh, so, yeah, just like, you know, as I wrote it here, there, the formula just doesn't give us any information about what to do with x is equal to 1. Okay, So you don't get an answer, but we say undefined. Uh, I guess if somebody was really just making a blunt statement about this last one, they'd say, well, there's no way to give an answer because the instructions don't apply to that number. Okay, that's true. I can agree with that. I understand what you're saying. But... Uh, you know, in math, the more technical term we say is that it's undefined. But you know what I mean, like either way, okay? All right, so let's build on this a little bit. So I like to do things like I'll, I'll introduce something that I hope is pretty simple. And then I, I want to just build it up bigger and bigger so that we can learn more and incorporate all the other stuff that we're supposed to know. So suppose I give you the same function we were just talking about, okay? And I'd like you to graph it this time. I want to see what it looks like. Well, 
again, it would just come down to following the instructions. All a graph is are all the x's and y's that satisfy the function. Okay? Now, so you've made it to calculus. I'm going to assume that you, you have a basic idea of what a graph is and that you can sketch some simple graphs. Okay? I'm going to assume that. It may not be true. If it's not true, it's something I'm going to need to know about. But unless you tell me otherwise, I'm going to assume that you can draw basic graphs. You've got the basic idea. So, you know, if I want to rely on that, then the way I can graph this is just by doing it in parts, right? It says y is x plus 5 if x is more than 1, and y is x plus 1 if x is less than 1. So it's like there's two graphs there. There's two formulas. So, all right, here in pencil is the graph. And I've labeled what every single aspect of it is all according to these instructions. You see this part right here? That line that goes forever, so that's what that arrow means, forever out this way, all right, keeps going, okay? That is y is x plus one, and I, I'm sketching that just left or less than one, okay? And then what's that right there? That's a hole. Why is that? Why is there a hole right there? Uh, what if I were to fill that point in? Wouldn't it be saying if x was 1, y was 2? Is that in contradiction to this? Remember, this is undefined at 1. There's no information about what to do or what you get if x is 1. So when x is 1, all right, I, I draw this line. There's the line y is equal to x plus 1, a line that has a slope of 1, and a y-intercept of 1. There it is. I'm drawing it left of 1 on the x-axis. But there's a hole there because you don't get a point. You don't get an answer when you put 1 in. If I did, it would be at 2, right? Because 1 plus 1 is 2. So that's where the hole goes. 1 for x, 2 for y. So for this other part, all right, here, this line is y is equal to x plus 5, a line that has a slope of 1 and an intercept on the y-axis of 5. I draw right of 1 on the x-axis. All right, you're looking at it. And again, there's a hole right there. Where's the hole? It's at 1 and 6. Uh, why is the hole there? Well, if I can't put 1 in. It's not allowed, right? We talked about that. But if I did, I would get 6. So it's kind of like saying uh, if I were to put in 1.0001, I would get this number right above 6, right? That's on the rest of the line, okay? But nonetheless, all right, I got the line y is equal to x plus 5 right of 1 having a hole at 1 and 6, okay? So notice when you look at this graph, I, you know, I can't say that uh, there is any y value that you get when x is 1. There's a hole and a hole. There's no point there at all. And that's consistent with this saying from the beginning that 1 is not included in the definition or the instructions and there's no way to get an answer. Okay? All right. So we can, if we need to look at these, we can look at them in pieces. All right? Each equation is a piece corresponding to what x is supposed to be bigger than one less than one or whatever it is all right let's look at another one that's a, a little bit more in depth okay now this has more parts to it but it's the same idea so what's how could we read this if we wanted to describe this to ourselves we say y is negative one if x is less than or equal to two so that includes two right that says if x is 2, all right, y is negative 1, okay, and then y is x plus 3, if x is between 2 and 4, not including 4, not including 2, and then y is 8, if x is between 4 and 7, not including 7, but including the 4. So just think about every piece of that. And if we sketch them one at a time, we'll get this, right? 
There's the horizontal line. Y is negative 1. If X is less than or equal to 2, why did I include that point? You see how that's not a hole? Well, that says that, you know, when you look at this, look at this, it says if X is 2, Y is 1. All right, well, there's, there's that point right there. Sorry, if X is 2, Y is negative 1. And if x is less than 2, y is also negative 1. So that's all these points out here, right? If x is 0, y is negative 1. 0 is less than 2. But it's a, it's a horizontal line going forever that direction, left of 2. Okay, so that would take care of this, this first one. Okay, what about this middle one? I need to draw the line x plus 3 between 2 and 4. Okay, well, that's this part. Okay, y equals x plus 3 if x is between 2 and 4. Why is there a hole here and a hole there? Is 4 included in the instructions? No. Is 2 included in the instructions? No. So there's not a point there then, right? Okay, all right, well, where, so there's a hole. Okay, there's a hole here and here. Why is this hole at 7 and this hole at 5? Why is that? Well, the thinking goes like this. I'm not supposed to put 4 in. But if I did, I would get 7. So that means that this line like goes right up to 7. But we leave that point off. And why is this hole at 5? 2 for x, 5 for y. Well, I'm not supposed to put 2 in, but if I did, 2 plus 3 is 5. So that means this line goes right there, and then we leave off the point 2 for x, 5 for y. Okay, so then that takes care of this one, the middle one. What about this last one? Y is 8 if x is between 4 and 7, okay? Well, y is equal to 8 is a horizontal line that would go through 8 on the y-axis. So you're looking at that. Okay, there's a horizontal line that goes through 8 on the y-axis. Um, but I'm only sketching it between 4 and 7. I'm going to include 4, but not 7. That means what? Doesn't that mean that the point 4 for x, 8 for y is on there? Right there. So yeah, I filled that point in. I included it. Why did I include it? Because 4 for x is included in the instructions. Okay, so there's 4 for x, 8 for y. Then the rest of it is the horizontal line, y is equal to 8. But then it ends at 7, okay? And again, why did I put a hole right there at 7? Well, because seven's not included. If I were to fill that in, I would be putting the point 7 for x, 8 for y. But that's not on there. X is only included to be less than 7. Seven's not going to be part of this. So that, of course, is why the hole's there. Now, by now, you know, hopefully, if I explain everything in great detail, uh, hopefully you start to pick up on some patterns. All right, that would be the idea. Try to, I'll, personally, I'll try to explain everything in a lot of detail. But the pattern that you should be seeing is that well, if I'm including something like less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, then that will give me a solid point on the graph that exists, okay? And if my definition has a, a, an inequality like less than or greater than, then I'll have holes in the graph, okay? Because, of course, you're leaving those numbers out. And so that would be true if, if that's the pattern that you've noticed. Okay, there's your function. Here's the graph, okay? Now let's look at something that, I guess it branches, it's, this is not a direct consequence of what we're just talking about, but um, it gives me a type of example I need to show you, okay? So just take this function at face value, just suppose I'm going to give this to you, and suppose I just explained right what a piecewise function was, could you create a piecewise function that behaved just like this function. Now, well, what's a function? All right, let's see. X goes in, Y goes out. That's what functions are. So, you know, for whatever function you want, 
like this one. You're going to put x in, and you're going to get y back out. That's what they do. Okay? So, could you create a piecewise function, which is what? Something like this. It says y is one thing or another thing, depending on what x is. The instructions make you pay attention to what x is in order to calculate y. Okay. Um, could you create something like that that behaved just like this? Meaning when you put the same x in, you get the same y back out. All right. Now, here's there's lots of ways I could explain how to do this, but here, here's the way I've decided to do it. Uh, I want you to think about something. I want to I want to have an observation to share with you. I want to see if you can agree with me about this. So, so um, would you agree that these numbers, the top number and the bottom number, are either going to be the same or opposite? Would you agree about that? Why is that? Well, because, like, if you know, if I have a positive number then the absolute value of the number and the number are going to be the same. They're going to be equal. But if I had a negative number, then the absolute value is positive, but the number is negative, and so they're opposite. Okay, so, you know, those numbers are going to be equal or opposite. That's, that's an observation that I want you to be able to agree with. Now, if these two numbers are either the same or opposite, and you divide them, then you'll either get one or negative one, okay? Now, that's just provides you something to think about. If you want to see this in more specific terms, you know, we can actually do some calculations if you want to. So I'm going to make a table. I'm going to see if there's a pattern to the way this function works, okay? So I, I have zero here. I have some negative numbers, and I have some positive numbers. And if you calculate the result out of that function, then you'll see that what I expected to happen actually does happen. You know, when you put any negative number in, not just these whole numbers, but any negative number, you'll get negative 1. Your math's going to look like this. You'll get a number divided by its opposite. Okay, that will be negative 1. When you put in any positive number, not just these whole numbers, anything, then you'll get a number divided by itself, a positive number divided by itself. Well, that's going to be 1. So the way this function works is it'll give you a negative 1 or a 1. It's undefined at 0 because when you put 0 in, you get 0 divided by 0, and there's no answer to that, okay? But let's say this. If I put in anything less than 0, this function will give me a negative 1. And if I put in anything more than 0 for x, this function will give me a 1. That's the, that's the pattern that I see. Okay, And for, there are other ways I could show this to you, but this is the way that I think is appropriate for right now. Okay, So let's do this. So I was going to, or my objective with this question, to make a piecewise function for this one, meaning a function that gives you the same x's in and the same y's back out. I think from the table we, we see a pattern to the way it works, right? So here it is. That function is the same as this one. Doesn't this, now just think about this. So here's my result right there. There's the piecewise function that behaves just like this one. These behave the same. Uh, all this does is summarize and capture the pattern that we see in the table. y is negative 1. If x is less than 0, that's certainly what happened, right? y is 1 if x is more than 0. Yeah, that's what happened. Uh, did I leave 0 out? Notice it doesn't say less than or equal or greater than or equal. I'm leaving 0 out. f of 0 is undefined, right? In this original function, if you put 0 in for x, it's undefined. You don't get an answer for y. So I can't include the 0. So if I was to put 
or equals to on either one of these, then it wouldn't work like this original function does. Okay? All right. So there you go. There's my result for that one. Okay? These behave exactly the same way. Okay? Let's try another one that I, I guess you could say is inspired by this. Okay? So let's look at this one. So this is similar. It's obviously different, right? It's not exactly the same, but it's similar. It's something over an absolute value. So, so let's say that, let, let's make this assumption that if we see something like this for now in our class, then we'll assume it works something like this one. Okay, that'll be the, our working assumption. So how about I'll explore this a little bit. Uh, well, first thing I notice about it is like this one, it's undefined at a certain point. Like here, you can't put zero in for x. And on this one, I notice, well, so what if x was negative 2? What's negative 2 plus 2? That's zero. And what about up here? Uh, negative 8 plus 8, that's also zero. So negative 2 is where it's undefined. Now, why am I going to focus on that? Well, because this other one, that's, it's like it's split where it was undefined. It's undefined at zero, and it takes one value on one side and another value on the other side. Okay, so we're going to assume it works something like this. That's, that's what I told you, okay? So, all right. Now, so I noticed negative 2. So when I make my table, like, I'm going to kind of start it with that. It's going to split there, I think. So I got negative 2. Okay, what's to the left of negative 2? Negative 3, 4, 5. What's to the right of negative 2? Negative 1, 0, 1, 2. Okay? And another thing is I factored out a 4. Why did I do that? Well, because I wanted you to think of it like the last one. Why did this function give me a negative 1 or a 1? I mean, besides the table, do you have any reason to believe that it was going to do that? Well, I did point out to you that um, this, the absolute value of a number versus the number, will either be the same or they will be opposite. So when you divide them, you're either going to get 1 if they're the same or negative 1 if they're opposite, right? Okay, so when I have this one, I thought, well, I'll factor out 4. Now look right here. x plus 2 versus absolute value x plus 2. Now, x plus 2 is a number. And here, x plus 2 is a number. So they're either going to be equal or opposite. So even before, like, say I covered this up. Say I didn't make the table yet. Even before I did that, I could say, all right, the x plus 2 and the absolute value x plus 2, those are either going to be equal or opposite. And so that is either going to be a negative 1 or a 1. And then with this 4 here, I suppose you'll get negative 4 or 4. Okay? So you could think about it like that. I mean... It's, we're doing math, and I'm, I should encourage you to think as deeply and thoroughly about numbers as I can, okay? So I, I, even before filling out the table, I would hope that you could learn to expect to see a negative 4 or a 4 split at the negative 2, right? Split at the number where it's undefined. So anyway, the, here's the table. That's the pattern. That's what it looks like. Um, here's some calculations for you if you want to verify them, but yes... If you're less than negative 2, y will be negative 4. And if you're right of negative 2, y will be 4. As a very simple way of working, this function, despite its complex appearance, only gives you two values. That's it. So it would be pretty easy to summarize it as a piecewise function. So this captures everything that could possibly happen in the table, right? Why is negative 4 if x is less than negative 2? Yes, that happens. 
And y is 4 if x is more than negative 2. Yeah, that also happens. That, that captures the whole story. Oh, f of negative 2 is undefined. Well, because, yeah, that's true from the beginning. So whatever I give you here has to be consistent with that. Okay, so there's the piecewise function. Now, uh, if you're doing this, if you know your task is to reduce this to something like that, you can make the table as detailed as you want, all right? Or you could, you know, depending on how good you are with numbers, you could do all this in your head. I'll leave that up to you. I just want to be uh, this as being what establishes how you think about it.